Open Moss Community School is in North Manchester. It is a multicultural school and it is one of the huge pleasures of teaching there that we have children speaking different languages. We have children who have a variety of special needs. The pupils who come to our school, history is really, really important to them. The history of their family, the history of their religion, their culture, their, their country, their community. So if we ever have a history project, the children don't have to be forced into it. The numbers are overwhelming in terms of pupils who want, want to be involved and they do exceptionally well. Around about 100 years ago, we lost lots of the local history around here because the Victorians thought we're going to build new. I love teaching local history and I think it's great that kids can actually get out into the area where they live and look at buildings and landscapes and be able to tell the history from those buildings and landscapes. I knew that Humphrey Cheatham, who set up Cheatham's Grammar School for Poor Children, his house was here underneath the park. Even though, according to the Ordnance Survey maps, it was still standing in the 1930s, nobody seems to have ever took a photograph. We had no idea what it looked like. Look at the ladies in Victorian dresses. This is 1907. Our house would have still been standing then. The plan was that they did the research to find out as much as they could about Council Hall, Humphrey Cheatham and the people who lived here. They discovered Humphrey Cheatham's mother's will and the great thing was we found the inventory of everything that was in the house when Mrs Cheatham died. So we've even got how many beds there were, how many pots there were and the fact that they had a dung heap out the outside of the house. And the dung heap would favour greatly in it because the kids didn't know what a dung heap was and they thought it was quite hysterical that you would actually leave somebody basically a pile of faeces in your will because it was valued. So the information we found out was brilliant and it's now available for the people to see because the will and the inventory had never been looked at before. Now, what do you notice about the other that? side of the project was to take that and produce something that would help future pupils in our school and people in the area to recognise that actually there was this building here and there is this history within the area that you can't see now because it's underneath the ground. So one wing would have been here and then a big house over there <coughs> and then buildings going off the back. From the beginning we decided there will be a number of strands that went in this so they would be doing Tudor dancing, they would dress up in Tudor costumes, they would cook Tudor food. We had an entire day of being a Tudor. We commissioned a song we then got in touch with a choir of people who had been in hospital because of various illnesses that they had and music was seen as part of their therapy for recovering and we wanted to make a film that would be like the horrible histories that we could then give to primary schools and be like a pack by which they could learn about their local history. When pupils get that chance to interact with the physicality of the past that is a really amazing learning tool for anybody of any age and it is really important that that tangible link to the past is preserved.